there are different ways that Maya gives you of letting object A drive object B or objects A, B, C, and D driving object Z. Okay, you can do multiple drivers for a given target. And there are various ways to do that, but constraints are the more common way that you use for animation, creating rigs and things like that. And there are different types of constraints that Maya gives you, and they have very specific purposes in the ways that they operate. So we're gonna start off talking about a point constraint. So point constraints, you can probably guess, constrains things based off a of position only. So, and again, like I said earlier, the selection order for constraints is different than what you do with parenting. With parenting, the parent object, the one that drives everything, is the last thing you select. With constraints, it's everything you select first driving the very last object, okay? For now, I want this cone to be driving this. So driver objects first, driven object last, and then what you do under the constraint menu, and all these things have option box, these are the options for a point constraint. And this is the default settings, again, with the exception to maintain offset, which I've turned on. So if I just apply this point constraint, you see these channels over here in the channel box turn blue. That means those channels in this object here, the NURBS cone, this last thing I've selected, are being driven by something. They have connections made from another node, or actually multiple nodes in this case. It's the point constraint node and also the position of this. So now if I zoom out and if I move around this thing here, it, it moves that other object. So it might seem like it's just like parenting, but again, it's only a point constraint. So if I rotate this object, it doesn't do a thing to the other cone because it's only being driven, as you can see, on its translate channels. Those are the only things being affected by this constraint relationship, okay? So that's what a point constraint does, is it drives things by position only. To remove a constraint, you do the exact same selection order you did to set it up, the driver objects first, driven object last, under constraint, remove target. And again, there's an option box for that too, but I'm just gonna use it by default. And now, this thing is no longer being driven, okay? So, by default, constraint axes is set to all. It means that all three axes are being driven by this parent or the driver or drivers. But I can change this to any one or combination of X, Y, and Z. Let's say I set it for X only. I only want the X translation of this driver object to affect this object here. So I set that for X, driver driven, apply. Now you see only X is being affected over here in the channel box. I grab my driver object, and as you can see, I can move every other axis I want, even up and down. Up and down doesn't do anything. And only X in this movement here will affect the other cone. You can do any combination of those, X, Y, X, Z, Y, Z, whatever you want to do. To do all three, which is the default, just go for all, and it'll do all three axes. Now, let's do it without maintain offset. If I say driver, driven, apply my constraint, now it automatically snaps that thing to the position of the driver object. If I have this cone and another cone that are both acting as driver objects, and move this one over. And actually, let me do this, the outliner, because I'll get the right pieces moving here. So if I want cone one and cone three to affect cone two, I can do point constraint, all axes, I'll turn off maintain offset, and now what it does is it snaps to the average of their positions. If I move this object here, it's, it's averaging out their two positions to affect the position of this third object here. So a point constraint, you can have multiple drivers, and it averages all those drivers' influences over the driven object. I can still move this if I want to, but the moment I grab this, and move it around, it snaps it back again because all three of these channels are being affected by those driver objects. Okay, so I can take these, tell that, remove the target, and now this thing is back to being on its own. So that's the basics of a point constraint. Let me show you quickly before we get to other types of constraints where you can see the constraint node itself.